Okay, so welcome. We are here with Brett, who is a DSW, and um, we are here to talk about an amazing topic this week. Um, we're going to be talking about developmental service workers, what they do, um, what kind of work, um, you know, they normally do, where do they work, and all these things. So that's why we invited um, Brett this week to talk to us about that and then about his experience. He's very successful in the field and has been <laughs> in the field for many years. So, you know, he will be the one guiding us through this topic. Welcome to the Care Support Podcast, Brett. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> we are so excited as well. I gotta say that this is not your first time with us, that you actually gave us an interview last year and it was great. So I am <laughs> to speak to us one more time. Well, the first question I have for you is, what does a DSW do? So a developmental service worker, we work with individuals that have like uh, developmental disabilities or some some sort of physical disability. So that could, you know, range from people with autism, Down syndrome, people that might have, you know, like say cerebral palsy that are maybe in wheelchairs. Um, also, a lot of a lot of times now DSWs are getting kind of into the field as mental health as well. Um, so, you know, as a DSW, you can kind of work, in a, you know, with a different kind of population, right? So you can work with the mental health, you can work with people that have, you know, autism, Down syndrome, or you can kind of work with people that have more like medical fragile needs. So there's a bunch of different areas of, you know, interests or different areas of, you know, places you can work. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a great field to get into. I, I know it is. It's very special <laughs> though, because you get to work with people that really need help. Exactly. Yeah, it's such a rewarding, you know, field to be in and, you know, a career to be in. So, yeah. Um, and what motivated you to get into uh, developmental service work? So actually a funny story. When I was when I was younger, I actually wanted to be a vet tech. Oh, uh, I loved I loved animals. So I kind of wanted to, you know, to be like, you know, in the, the vet kind of side of things. Um, so long story short, I was actually away on vacation. I was in high school, so I was in a co-op placement. So when I came back from my vacation, um, the vet the vet clinic spot was already taken. So I couldn't go there. So they're like, well, the only other place we have is either in a school with, you know, in a classroom with people with individual or students that had disabilities, or you could work in some conservation area. I don't know, whatever. And I was like, yeah, that's I'm not, you know, outdoor work with like labor and all that. That's not me. So let's go for, you know, the school board. I had no idea what I was walking into. I literally had no, I, you know, you know, growing up, people with disabilities, you didn't really hear much about it. So I was like, okay, let's try it out. So we tried it. I went and I fell in love. I knew that's exactly what I wanted to do. And so I actually went to school for, I, I did a year of child and youth worker program first. So I did a year of that. But it was more on like, you know, kind of like mental health, like homeless population, you know, CAS and all that kind of stuff. So I thought, no, I, I, I never heard about the DSW program. So I was like, okay, I need to find something that's more like developmental, right? Like with autism and all that. So then I found out about the, the developmental service worker program. So I went and I took it and yeah, I took, I've been in the field for almost nine years now. So. Almost a decade. That's, that's uh, a almost. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what are the requirements to work as a DSW? Do you have to have a bachelor's degree? Is there a particular uh, practicums that you have to have or license or registration? So we are not like we are not registered. So I know a lot of a lot of places are like PS, I think PSWs have re registration and all that. But as DSWs, we don't have like a college of whatever. So we don't have to be registered to pay like, you know, a, a yearly fee or any of that kind of thing. So which is good. Um, no, just to like to work in the field, you just have to go to school. Um, so most of the colleges have the DSW program. So normally the regular program is a two year program that will, you know, kind of go over a thing, but they also have an accelerated program. So that is only a year program. So basically you kind of do it all. I think, I think there's a few classes that you don't take in the one year program that you do in the second year. I like I took the two year program. I never took the accelerated, so I don't know fully what the courses are in the accelerated. I think they're about the same, but 
I, I, I would suggest people taking the two year program to kind of learn, you know, to take all the classes and to learn as much as you can to get in this field. So. Oh, okay. I get it. It's a two year program and no, no license or registration. That's great because that opens yeah. the for a lot of people that want to get into healthcare, but maybe are not sure about what to do exactly. So. Yeah, exactly. And like, you know, there's, this is a dot, you know, like oh, there's a lot of jobs out there. Like there's a lot of need for DSW. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it is a great field to get into. So. Definitely. Um, and what are those things that you feel that people usually get wrong about DSWs or people just don't know about DSWs? So a lot of people don't actually know what DSWs are. So a lot of times when I introduce myself or like they ask what I do for work, I say I'm a DSW. They just automatically think I'm a PSW. So I work with, you know, the elderly and whatnot, which is mean, you know, I, the PSW's job is also very, you know, rewarding and very, you know, time consuming and very hard and all that. But we are, you know, as a PSW, I think you only do one year schooling where we do two years of schooling. Like, once again, is, you know, we're, I'm not trying to compete with PSWs, but, you know, DSWs, we are more, you know, as I said, the, the developmental side. So we work with individuals with disabilities where the PSWs are all the elderly kind of side of things, right? And as, and as DSWs, we are medically trained or sorry, not medically trained. We can train on how to give medication where like PSWs don't have that training. So if there's a lot of like people just assume that we're PSWs and no, we are DSWs. <laughs> like, so it's, it's kind of confusing there. Yeah, it is. And why do you think PSWs are more known? Is it because there are more? I would think so. Yeah, there's definitely more PSWs, I think, in the field. And as I said, a lot of people don't, I don't think a lot of people know what DSWs are, right? So I don't think a lot of people take the DSW. I think now, like, you know, when I first started, a lot of people had no idea what a DSW is. But now that I've been in the field for, as I said, like almost 10 years, it's now becoming more of a, a known kind of career choice and a known, you know, people want to go to school for DSW and all that. So I think now it's becoming more popular. So, which is good. Cause as I said, we, there's a lot of, lot of jobs and a lot of need for this. So. Yeah. Um, speaking about soft skills, because every career has a, a specific set of skills that are required to perform it. Uh, what are those soft skills that people need to get into uh, developmental service work? So I'd say the first thing is, once again, you want to get into this field if you love to, you know, care for people, if you want to help people, because as I said before, in this field, it's a lot of, you know, helping people with disability. So sometimes, you know, you may have to assist with personal care. So that would, you know, maybe helping change, you know, um, brief. So a brief is basically a diaper, but in the, in the DSW field, we call it a brief because like diapers are kind of for children, right? Or, or kids mm -hmm. or we call them brief. So you have, you know, sometimes you'll have to change someone's brief. You'll have to assist with feeding. You have to, you know, assist with taking people out to the public or to the community to do outings or appointments and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So you have to have that caring kind of nature, right? A lot of times you see people get into this field because they think it's an easy, you know, an easy job and, you know, it kind of pays well or whatever, but like that's, that's people that get into their field for the wrong reason. So yeah, you have to be caring. You have to want to help people. Also, you have to have a lot of patience because a lot of times the people with disabilities, they can be really stubborn, um, you know, and they test your patience. So if you don't have a lot of patience, I don't think this is the field for you. Um, so you have to have, a, you know, a lot of patience and a lot of drive and a lot of initiative, right? Like, you know, you have to, you have to kind of think on your feet a lot. You have to, once again, oh, problem solving. Sometimes there's a lot of problems that come up and you have to, you know, use that, you know, quick think of judgment and problem solve right away where, you know, some people might have that, you know, problem with they can't think right away or think on their feet. So it is, it is, it can be a very tough job depending on where you work and, you know, different, different environments, like where you work in this field kind of use different kind of, you know, you know, things, but I would say the main ones are basically patients, um, you know, that caring kind of nature, you know, and, to, and, and and just the initiative and wanting to, you know, help people, so. Absolutely, definitely. <laughs> Sorry, good ones. If you don't have patience, don't get into the SW, just don't. No, do unfortunately, it's not going to be for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, in your opinion, which are the best work settings for DSWs? So, for DSWs, there's, we don't have a wide range of kind of places we can work. Um, 
So basically the main kind of areas where people tend to kind of go is the school board system. So in the school board, you can be hired as an educational assistant. So yeah, basically the educational assistant will help students kind of with academics. Once again, they have a lot of times they have that developmental piece. So maybe they have autism, you know, or maybe they have some sort of, you know, learning disability, or maybe they just, they can't process quickly, or maybe they have trouble learning, you know, at say, you know, the students, maybe he's in grade one, maybe he, maybe he functions at say like a kindergarten level. So he just needs that extra kind of support. Um, but also like, I would say nowadays working in the field, you see a lot more behaviors. So that, you know, is with students that are like, you know, can be physically, you know, assault, like not assaulting, but physically hitting you or physically throwing objects at you, you know, spitting at you, calling you names. So that's where the patience kind of comes into, because when you work with individuals with behaviors, a lot of times they look for a reaction. So you can't, you can't react to them, right? So sometimes you're sitting there getting, you know, kicked by a child or, you know, tables or, you know, stuff thrown at you. And, you know, your first reaction is to yell, stop, enough, you know, and all this where they feed off that. They want that. They want you to react to them. So a lot of times you just got to sit there and not respond at all or just, you know, redirect with simple kind of words. Um, so, yeah, the school board can be a very difficult job to be in. It's, it is a physically demanding job. Um, you know, actually, like, I think there's a study out there that shows that um, EA, EA, so educational assistant, has one of the top WSIB claims because of how a lot of people are injured on this job because of how physically, you know, aggressive some um, students, some, sorry, how physically aggressive that, you know, students can be, right? So the school board is, it is a great job, like, you know, for people, maybe like family members, you know, or, um, you know, parents that, you know, you know, because you get the summers off, you, it's only like a Monday to Friday, it's a day job. So that's why a lot of people kind of get into the EA kind of, you know, world because it, you know, has that kind of perks. Um, so there's that side. And then you go to the group homes. So group homes are basically homes that will house up to, you know, sometimes one person, sometimes I think the cap is five. So um, basically they all live in the house. Um, you once again, you support them. So, you know, some houses might, might have behaviors. So once again, you're dealing with that, you know, aspect of, you know, dealing with people that might need that, you know, you need to, you know, once again, the strategies you need to use to calm down individuals or that kind of stuff. And then there's the other side where there's the medical kind of side. So there would be some homes that, you know, you need to help with lifting them out of their wheelchair to their bed or, you know, be into the bath and all that kind of stuff. So the group home job is, you know, it's once again, it is a demanding, you know, physically demanding, you know, a lot of times you're, you know, standing, you have to, once again, you know, you're getting hit, you're getting spit. Um, but that's more like, you know, the group home job is kind of helping them with the more daily, like, you know, they're 18 and over at that point. So, you know, once again, you're helping them with kind of like life skills and living. So, they're, you know, you, you're kind of going into their home to help them. So you're helping with laundry, you know, cooking, once again, taking them on their appointments, um, you know, taking them to, you know, daily activities, whether that is, you know, going to the movies, skating, bowling, um, and then once again, you know, a lot of times people just realize they have a lot of medications. So you have to make sure, you know, you're up to date, you know, with giving them their medications on time and all that kind of stuff. So those are the main two kind of places where DSWs work. So it's the school board or either the group home. There are a few other places out there that do hire um, DSWs. So like I'm from London, Ontario. So um, some hospitals will hire DSW. So for instance, I actually worked, it's, it's, um, at Parkwood. So here they have, um, it's called a dual diagnosis unit. So basically dual diagnosis is where an individual will have a disability, like a de developmental disability, but also a mental health component as well. So that is what we call dual diagnosis. So some, so there's some hospitals, I believe, not just in London, but I think around, so I think Oakville has one, I think Toronto might have one that will hire DSWs to work on their dual diagnosis ward because that individual has that developmental piece. So once again, like working on this, on the, I think they call it a ward or a unit. Um, it once again is dealing with mostly individuals with behavior. So once again, you're getting attacked, you have to, you know, 
deal with de-escalating the individual. Sometimes you have to use physically, you know, physically restrain the individual. So you're trained on, you know, you're trained on how to, how to, re, you know, intervene with your, with your hands basically and how to restrain them. Right. So a lot of places, like even the school board and the group home, they will train you on how to de-escalate situations, but also will train you on how to physically, you know, if you have to physically restrain an individual properly. So, you know, you're not hurting them. They're not hurting, you're not hurting yourself. Um, so there's like programs, there's different programs out there. There's, you know, um, it's called CPI. There's one that's called NVCI. And then there's another one. The top one is like safe management. So there's a bunch of different programs that will kind of help you, you know, with the de-escalation situation and also help you kind of train to, to, to restrain people in a proper, you know, a proper way. So, you know, people might be like, oh my gosh, I don't want to get a skill because it's this deal with, you know, aggressive people. And I don't want, you know, I don't want to get hit. Like, I'm, I'm not trying to scare you away, but I'm just being honest. Like it is a field that there's, you know, a lot of like, I'm seeing it now, you know, being in the field, it's dealing with a lot of young adults, mostly males, to be honest, that are aggressive. So, you know, if you don't mind getting hit and, you know, once again, you just kind of got to look past that behavior right and see that he's a human or he or, he or she is a human being right so sometimes their behaviors are not because they want to kill you or hurt you they're they're behaving because there's some there's some underlying you know situation that we might not know about right because a lot of times in this field you deal with people that are nonverbal that can't they can't vocalize how are they feeling so sometimes they lash out because they can't communicate so you know like once again this is where the patient's coming you have to have that patience to you know, to know what, why this person is lashing now, right? Like, I mean, you do have some individuals that will want to hit you and all that because maybe they're mad at you or, you know, you maybe said that they can't do this. But also, like, once again, you have to look past that and just see how such a rewarding career and a rewarding field it is to be in, right? So, as I said, don't be scared. You get you get trained properly. But, yeah, it's it's such a rewarding and, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change, you know, my field for the, for the world. Like, I love it. I love, you know, seeing the smiles on people's faces and, you know, just seeing the littlest things just to change their life. Right. Cause sometimes you're, you're their family, especially when you're in a group home or, you know, if you do say work in the hospital setting, some of those individuals that we support, you know, their parents maybe have passed away or their parents maybe have nothing to do with them. So you become kind of family to them. Right. Like, I mean, you do have to set your boundaries, but you know, you see them sometimes you see more than your own family. So like it's, as I said, yeah, I just can't, I can't repeat myself enough of how such a rewarding feeling and such a rewarding career it is to be a DSW. So. That's good to know. I think you've given a lot of people, a lot of clarity on the career. People that maybe are interested, but have second thoughts on it. will now yeah. have information that, they didn't have before from a person with almost 10 years of experience. So I have really appreciate that. We really appreciate that. Thank you. And like, and yeah, like, and as I said, like I've worked, I've worked, you know, I currently work in this school board. I also currently work in the group home. So I have, I have that experience in all, like, as I said, I worked in the hospital setting. I, so I have experience in all the settings. Right. So once, as I said, you just kind of find, you got to find your niche. So as I said, once you kind of get into the fields, you have to find like, do you want to work with the behaviors? Do you want to work kind of with more of the medical side? So you just kind of got to play it out, right? And and it's and it is really kind of when I first had to deal with my first behaviors, I was really kind of like, I don't even know what to do because in school they don't really like taking the DCV program. They don't really teach you a lot about behaviors, right? Like they they kind of touch on dual diagnosis. They kind of touch on autism and you know and some behaviors, but like. When you when you when you're kind of thrown into dealing with someone that is you know coming after you with their fists and kicking and you kind of like are like you kind of like lose like what am I supposed to do right so as I said like when you first kind of get in the field it's going to be it is going to be scary it's going to be hectic but like once you kind of get that experience and you kind of get in there it's second nature to you and you kind of you know as I said it's just that rewarding piece and all that so yeah like it's. Well, thank you for your insights. I can see that you're very passionate about your career, which is great because obviously the kids that you work with in the group home can benefit from your passion, from your commitment, 
your dedication. I just want to finish off saying that at Karen Support, as you know very well, we have a lot of jobs for DSWs. You can actually find employment on our platform for DSWs. And, um, you know, just people out there that are listening right now, if this is what you want to do, if you want to help people, this is a great career, as Brent just explained. And um, we're here for you in general to support your career path, to get you employed, uh, and to bring you amazing content like this. Thank you so much, Brett, for this amazing interview. I loved it. And um, I hope that we get to collaborate in the future again. I hope so too. Thank you so much for having me.